When people start to learn Blender, learn about topology, and get into subdivision surface modeling, they usually move their cursor to the top left, click the X button, never to be seen again. For whatever reason, these subjects seriously scare people away. I don't know if it's certain tutorials that are confusing, I don't know if it's some weird university curriculum that is outdated that is scaring new users. I seriously have no idea because sub-D modeling actually isn't that complicated and I'm going to prove it to you in this video. Now if you're new to Blender, grab our Jumpstart course. This thing has over 25,000 students and is the top free hard surface modeling course out there. It'll get you up to speed with Blender much quicker than binge watching my videos here. Trust me. Now if you're already familiar with Blender, grab our free hard surface ebook instead because it covers some more complex subjects in there and is super easy to read. I'll link both assets in the description. Seriously, grab them, they're great. Okay, so back to sub-D modeling. This is pretty much the default workflow that most tutorials will teach you. You'll get taught clean topology, edge flow, quads, and all the usual technical jargon, but the technical jargon is boring and confusing, so let's break sub-D down so it's easier to understand. Intuition is the key here. Okay, first check this out. I don't even need you to understand what is happening on a technical level here. I just want you to observe. Observing is what actually builds intuition. Okay, so here's the most basic form of topology, a triangle. It has three edges and three vertices. I'm gonna go into wireframe mode and add a subdivision surface modifier, turn off optimal display, and set it to simple. Now watch what happens to the triangle as I subdivide it more and more. If you watch this a few times over, you can naturally understand what is happening without me explaining anything. Now setting the sub D modifier to simple is the same thing as simply right clicking and choosing subdivide in edit mode. The only difference is that with the modifier, I can easily undo subdivisions if needed because it's a non-destructive workflow. So now that you've visually seen the subdivision taking place, let's switch back to Catmull Clark. What this version of sub D does is it smooths out the triangle, averaging out the edges for us. Again, don't worry about what is happening on a technical level, just observe and intuitively feel it. Sub D modeling is all about feeling and intuition, and once you can build that natural feel for it, it becomes easy. If you're interested in the technical side of triangle subdivisions, the YouTube channel Number File has some great content on it, and you can also research graph theory if you really want to dive deep. Okay, so now that we've seen triangle subdivision, let's add a quad. Now, if I have a square, it subdivides nice and evenly, but if it's a rectangle, it subdivides into more rectangles. And generally, we want to have even and consistent topology for the best and cleanest results. So if you have an elongated quad, just add a loop cut to chop it up into squares and you're pretty much good to go. And finally, the devil's creation, which is subdividing n-gons. Now, depending on the type of n-gon, the subdivision results will be drastically different. If it's something like a pentagon, it'll subdivide nicely. All sub D is really doing is converting the topology into quads. However, it's easier to subdivide quads into more quads than it is to subdivide n-gons into quads which is precisely why the type of n-gon matters. If I decided to take Suzanne the monkey and be disrespectful by turning a part of her head into an n-gon, you can see what happens as the sub-D works its magic. As it gets denser and denser, the topology at the n-gon gets tighter and tighter, eventually causing pinching. As you can see, there are two n-gons, but if I joined one into a triangle, I'd just have one triangle and one n-gon. And in this case, you can see that it subdivides pretty nicely without any noticeable pinching. Now, of course, if I took the regular clean monkey made of all quads, you can see this subdivides much nicer and with much better even smoothing. The point I'm trying to make here is that even with n-gons and triangles, it can actually subdivide pretty decently. But generally, you don't want to have pinched areas like this. It's going to distort if you try to bend it and generally looks more unprofessional. But like I said, certain types of n-gons, you can get away with it. Now let's take a really bad n-gon and see what happens. As I subdivide this type of n-gon more and more, you can see how awful the topology gets. This would cause some seriously bad pinching if we had this on an organic object. 
big no-no. And this is precisely what people mean when they say don't use n-gons or triangles when subdividing. I've never been a fan of this blanket statement, and I think a much more appropriate statement is be super careful when subdividing triangles or n-gons because certain kinds can cause dramatically different results. As you saw before, even if I had an n-gon or a triangle here or there, depending on the type, it could actually subdivide quite nicely and with nearly identical results as if there is a quad. This is what I want you to understand. The reason there's such a controversy about using n-gons with sub D is for the example I just gave, it can cause disasters if not used with caution. But at the end of the day, if you have an n-gon that subdivides nicely, all it's gonna do is convert that topology into quads anyways. That is literally what the sub D modifier does. The issue is the uneven distribution of topology when subdividing in certain types of n-gons as you can clearly see from the example before. This is literally all you need to know on an intuitive level about sub-D modeling and how it works. As for the different modeling methods, retopologizing and mesh density, that is a completely different subject. My goal here was to show you what's happening so that way you can make appropriate decisions and understand intuitively what sub-D is actually doing. I hope this video made sense. If you wanna see a bit of sub-D modeling in action, check out this video here and you can learn more of the workflows. Also, like I said, check out our free Jumpstart for Blender course and the hard surface modeling ebook. I'll link both in the description. Catch you in the next one.